Hi, I'm Hi. Blaine, and today we're going to do a brief lesson on the dreaded logic game. For some reason, many people hold the misconception that to be good at logic games, you have to be good at math, but that isn't true at all. What you have to be good at is organization. So we're going to look at a logic game that is seemingly complex because of all its rules, but see how with a bit of organization, we can totally tackle it. Here's the game. Five people, Harry, Iris, Kate, Nancy, and Victor, are to be scheduled as contestants on a television show, one contestant per day for five consecutive days from Monday through Friday. The following restrictions must be observed. Nancy is not scheduled for Monday. If Harry is scheduled for Monday, Nancy is scheduled for Friday. If Nancy is scheduled for Tuesday, Iris is scheduled for Monday. Kate is scheduled for the next day after the day for which Victor is scheduled. Upon reading this, you might feel a bit overwhelmed and go straight to the questions. And that's fine, you could probably brute force your way through one or two of the questions and get them right. But instead, let's not go back and forth between the rules and the questions, the rules and the questions. Let's take a moment to actually organize our thoughts first into a visual representation. Uh, and then after that, we'll go to the questions. So the first thing to ask yourself is, what type of game is this? And the answer is simply ordering. There are a few different types of games that we would go over if we were tutoring, but all you have to know for this one is that we're being asked to put the contestants in order Monday through Friday. So let's represent that thought by drawing Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday with blanks. So we're gonna fill in our contestants above. Now, the next thing we need to know are our players, which are H, I, K, N, and V. Now notice that I didn't label the days of the weeks M, T, W because I don't want to confuse my days with my players of the game. Uh, now that we have all the information that we could get from the first little paragraph form, we can go to the rules and translate those. The first rule is pretty straightforward. That is, Nancy is not scheduled for Monday. So let's write that as N does not equal Monday. The next rule, if Harry is scheduled for Monday, Nancy is scheduled for Friday, we're gonna write like this. If H equals Monday, then, with the arrow sign, N equals Friday. But we're not done. We also need to do the contrapositive. Now, don't worry if you've never heard this word before. It's something we can go into greater detail when we're tutoring. But basically, what it means is another logically true way of writing the same information. Uh, so the contrapositive here is written, if N does not equal Friday, then H does not equal Monday, which means if Nancy is not on Friday, then Harry uh, is not on Monday, okay? That's the contrapositive. Both those two rules are the same rule, but just written in different form. For the third rule, if Nancy is scheduled for Tuesday, Iris is scheduled for Monday. We're going to write as, if N equals Tuesday, then I equals Monday. And again, the contrapositive, if I does not equal Monday, then N does not equal Tuesday. The reason the contrapositive is so important is because the LSAT doesn't often test, did you understand this rule straightforward? It tests, did you understand what else it could mean? All right, and finally, the last rule. Kate is scheduled for the next day after the day for which Victor is scheduled. We're gonna write that simply as V, K next to each other, meaning that we always know that V and K are next to each other in that particular order. In some games, we'll go even further with our organization and plug it into a graph or a chart or whatever setup that we have given the beginning paragraph. But for this game, because none of the rules actually assign one of our players to a particular day, we'll go to the questions and let those guide us and we can fill in Monday through Friday appropriately. Basically, for each question, we're going to redraw our setup and plug in according to the information presented in the question. Number one. Victor can be scheduled for any day except Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Well, let's find our rule about Victor and figure out what we can deduce. Now, we know that we drew it as B followed by K. This first one, like the first question of 99% of logic games on the LSAT, is kind of a gimme. They're just asking, have you paid attention to the rules? And since we have so nicely drawn our rules, we know that V is always followed by K, which means that logically, V cannot be on Friday, otherwise there would be no place for K to go. So we're done with that question. Number two, if Iris is scheduled for the next day after Harry, which one of the following lists all those days, any one of which could be the day for which Harry is scheduled? 
Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday, Monday, Thursday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Monday, Wednesday, Thursday. Okay, this one seems a little more confusing, but let's just figure out what the question means. It is simply asking that if we have H followed by I, then which one of the days or any days that Harry could be scheduled? So this question is telling us that our new rule for this question only looks like H followed by I. And then we want to figure out which days could H actually be on. Now what we could do is go through, plug H into every single day of the week and figure it out that way. But remember, this is a multiple choice test. So let's use the answer choices to guide us to how to strategically plug in. First of all, Monday is listed in every answer choice. So we know without a doubt that Monday is a day where Harry could be placed and we don't have to check it. Saves us some time. Now let's see what happens when we place Harry in Tuesday. When we fill in, we'll have a blank in Monday, H and then I in Tuesday and Wednesday, and then two more blanks. But we know that V and K always have to go together. So where do they have to go? They have to go in the Thursday, Friday slot which means who's left? N. But what does our very first rule say? N cannot be on Monday. Therefore, Tuesday is not a day that works for Harry. Thus, we can cross off answer choices A and D because they have Tuesday in it. Next, let's try Wednesday. This will look like H in Wednesday, I in Thursday. Again, V and K have to be together, so let's fill that in on Monday and Tuesday, and that leaves N to go in Friday. When we double check our rules, we see that none are broken because we only have rules for if N is on Tuesday, which it's not, and for if N is not on Friday, which it is. So none of our rules are broken. Thus, without a trigger, we don't get a result. Therefore, we know that Wednesday is a day where we can place H. We can't eliminate any answer choices, but we do know that once we check Thursday, we'll have our answer. So on to Thursday. When we place H in Thursday, I is on Friday, and we have a rule about I. Because of the contrapositive, we know that if I isn't on Monday, then N isn't on Tuesday. And since N also can't be on Monday, we can deduce that N must be on Wednesday, and we're certain about that, which means that V and K have to go in the Monday-Tuesday slot. Again, this does not break any rules, so Thursday is a day for H to go on, and it's totally fine. Therefore, our final answer is E. All right, here are the rest of the questions to the game. Take a moment and see how your organization will really pay off. And if you want the answers, you'll have to contact the office for tutoring, okay? Uh, but if you stuck with the organization, you should feel confident that you've gotten the right answers. Good luck.